That's definitely not the worst thing I've ever tasted, actually. That's doable. Hi, I'm Rochelle, herbalist, founder of Supernatural, and your host of Plant Based. And today we're talking about longevity because you're all asking about it. So the coolest thing about longevity and plant-based is that we've basically been talking about it this whole time. All of the plants, the foods, the herbs, the practices, the recipes that I've given you over the last couple of years are all supportive of longevity. So you have all of that to start with. So today, uh, the herbs that I have brought that we'll talk about that we'll make into a recipe are specifically focused on kind of a neuro longevity. And that's just because that's what many of you are asking about. And we tend to think about longevity in terms of our brains often. Now it could be the longevity of our bones and our skin and all these other things. But today we're focused a little bit more up here. Today, we're focused on the herbs that help support longevity. And we're going to make them into a shot. Just a super quick way to knock back these herbs because they don't taste great. And the reality is that not all herbs taste great. And I would be kidding you if I said you could put these into a latte and it would taste wonderful. It just won't. So I'm gonna show you how I make a shot to get back the herbs that don't taste great, but that are incredibly beneficial for longevity. All right, so let's make this longevity shot. So I am going to start with a base of a little bit of oat milk. You could totally use water. Again, remember the point here is function, not flavor. So first up, we have rhodiola. So rhodiola is an adaptogenic herb. It's a root. Uh, it is known for increasing performance, uh, memory, recall, recovery. And recovery is a big part of longevity because we need to be able to flip into a system that is performing well, but then we need to be able to flip out of it and be in that rest and digest and that sort of neutral state. So. Rhodiola is great for so many things. It's a little bit hard to list all of them. Another nice benefit of rhodiola is it helps blunt the release of cortisol, our stress hormone, which can be really detrimental in um, kind of chronic doses. Okay, next up we have ginseng. And um, ginseng, these are all incredible, let's be honest. Um, but ginseng is especially incredible. Um, this one helps to reduce neuroinflammation. That's inflammation in the brain, which we are finding more and more research to show can cause anxiety, depression, long-term neurological disorders, as you would expect. Um, it's also an adaptogenic herb, so it's helping with our stress response, always helpful. It's antioxidant. It helps support our immune system to be active, but not overactive. It also helps to increase levels of BDNF, which is a protein protein in the brain that helps supports uh, nerve growth and the life and sort of health of neurons. Super important for longevity. So ginseng going in the cup. Um, love that one so much. Now we have bacopa, uh, another herb that looks like all the rest on the table, but is definitely different. So bacopa is often used in ADD and ADHD treatments. It is a cerebral tonic. It helps to increase circulation in the brain. It helps to prevent um, the breakdown or the inhibition of BDNF. So basically saying it's supporting BDNF levels again. Um, it's antioxidant. We definitely consider this one a nootropic. So it's supportive of memory, cognition, kind of learning and mental health overall. Again, you know, when I say it's a cerebral tonic, that is sort of herbalism speak for this is an herb that helps with brain health overall. 
um, really phenomenal. Hard to it's hard to uh, list all of the benefits of Bacopa. So putting that one in our shot and moving on. Next up, my fave, functional mushrooms. Again, like crazy benefits of functional mushrooms for brain health. You're gonna see mood balance from mushrooms like reishi. You're going to see nerve health and nerve regeneration from mushrooms like lion's mane. They're nootropic, so again, improving memory, cognition, um, learning, helping to reduce inflammation in the brain, helping to um, improve kind of mm, communication between uh, parts of the brain. Uh, also, so also functional mushrooms are supporting the immune system, and our immune system is clearly part of our longevity, right? We need it to be functional. We don't want it to be overactive. We don't want an autoimmune condition, right? And we don't want it to be underactive. So functional mushrooms help to balance the immune system. They're also great for the gut, love them. All of these plants, you know, I'm talking a lot about cerebral benefits, but again, all of these plants are whole system support. Um, plants are just that way, which is why I love them. We have astragalus. So I chose astragalus for immune system support again, because the immune system is going to be so important in longevity. However, you might replace astragalus with something that supports your liver. For example, if you felt like liver health is more important for you long-term than immune system function. So this one could kind of trade out, you know, for something that is, you know, tailored to your needs based on your lifestyle. All right, and last but certainly not least, maybe the most important of all of these, and I kid you not, is turmeric. Turmeric is something we should all be taking more of. It is so good for so many things. So reducing inflammation, major for longevity. Turmeric is helpful for the immune system, for, again, neuroinflammation, for gut health, for joints, for skin, for all of it, it's so good. And it's very easy to find, right? Okay, now I'm going to put in just a tiny bit, tiny, tiny bit of black pepper, like the littlest bit, because we don't need this to be spicy, but we want a little black pepper in there because black pepper is what we call a bioenhancer which means it helps to improve the absorption of anything else we're taking. So yes, the turmeric, we know turmeric black pepper combination, it's gonna help us absorb all the rest of this too. And now our shot tastes really gross, but it doesn't matter because it's function over flavor, right? All right, moment of truth, I'm doing it. And then I'm gonna live forever, it'll be worth it. That's definitely not the worst thing I've ever tasted, actually. That's doable. Yeah, that's definitely doable. <laughs> now you have to do it. <laughs> Dare. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll be doing that again. So this is a shot that you can do every day. And you don't have to do it every day, of course but it's a good idea to do it on a regular basis. Um, the more often we do these things, then the um, better the effects are, right? So have it on a regular basis and every day if possible. So some of these herbs are not the most common, but don't be discouraged by that. Um, work with what you know, and if you just start, wanna start with one or two, that is totally fine. Um, another great way to make this easier is to measure out the herbs that you want to use into batches. So maybe make 30 days worth all at once, right? Just mix all the powders together and do a little math to figure out, okay, I need to take a teaspoon of this every day. And then it's as simple as a teaspoon in some water or oat milk instead of, you know, five five partial measurements. So I highly recommend that if you want to have this on the regular. And if you need the math for doing that batching, you can just check the description below. I have done it all for you. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this serves you very well. For more episodes of Plant Based, subscribe to Well and Good's YouTube channel. 
And for more herbalism, follow Rochelle Robinette on Instagram. Thank you.